glad to be here, and I'm glad to get to work for uh, all of you, unless you're visiting, then I'm glad to get to work for you anyway, because we do work in, uh, uh, in Washington in the Congress, uh, though this Congress isn't getting a lot done. Let me tell you what I think we ought to be doing, and in fact, what we did most of my first 10 years in Congress when I was the majority, and it's about energy. In fact, the last five months, I've been spending more time talking to Southwest Missourians about energy than I have in a long time because they're more concerned about energy than they've been in a long time. Doesn't mean I've been doing different things in Washington because since I've got there, I thought we ought to view our natural resources as an economic asset, not an environmental hazard. And part of the problem with this $3.50 gas we have today and almost $4 gas we had a few days ago was for too long uh, in America, we've seen our economic assets, uh, our, our natural resources as an environmental hazard and we pursued it that way. Every other country in the world looks at their natural resources and they think, what economic advantage does this give us? We've looked at ours and thought, what terrible thing could happen because we have this resource? For instance, we're the only country in the world that could drill in the deep water, 25, 50, 100 miles off the Atlantic and Pacific coast that doesn't do that. And we should be doing that. We ought to be going forward on all fronts. I was at a dozen uh, service stations last weekend in southwest Missouri, just going up to people at the gas pumps and saying, I need some stories to tell in Washington. I think I'm for the right things, but I need some stories about how these gas prices are affecting you. And believe me, in the next six months, this gas crisis is going to become an energy crisis. Because again, we haven't done what we should be doing. Now, we, we need to be moving forward on all fronts. We need to find more. We need to use less, more conservation, more efficiency. Uh, and we need to invest in the future. How do we go about finding alternatives to the way we've been providing energy? Everything from uh, coal to liquids uh, to uh, more nuclear energy. Uh, those are the kinds of things we ought to be pushing forward for to get our economy back where it needs to be. Now, if I was you, the first question I'd ask me would be, well, for six years you were in the majority in the Congress and you had a Republican president and you had a Republican Senate, why didn't you do those things then? My answer is that for those six years and for the four before that, we actually sent exactly the same kinds of things to the Senate that if we'd send them today, I don't think they could say no. Because when we sent deep water drilling, when we sent shale oil exploration, when we sent more refinery sightings, uh, the Senate was able to stop them because they weren't very popular at the time. When we sent more expedited processes to have nuclear power, uh, that issue was about 30% popular and 70% unpopular. That is three minutes. Today it's 70% popular and 30% unpopular. If we'd send it over there today, I think it would happen. That's why we keep insisting that before we go take that August work period, that the majority bring the bills to the floor that we've sent to the House, the Senate in the past, and when that happens, a lot of our energy problems uh, are solved. Uh, Cooper, you got some questions? Yes. Oh, well, uh, first I'll ask. If anyone from the audience has a question, we'll start with the audience tonight. Okay, yes. Oh, here's one. I absolutely love to ask this. I live in Carthage and I see our city dying every day because of the building of the population. What are you going to do along with your court, your co workers? Yeah. Well, for on uh, illegal immigration, I really think I've, again, been one of the leaders in the Congress on that. When I was, there was a brief period of time that I was both the whip and the majority leader, and that's when we brought the legislation to the floor uh, to secure the borders, to build our fence. Uh, we're about 600 miles into, uh, into fencing off the border. It is a reasonable expectation of a government to secure its borders. When you read about countries like Lebanon, it's hard, in the Middle East, it's hard to find an article that doesn't say something like, uh, the government of Lebanon is really not a legitimate government because it doesn't secure its borders. And that's a legitimate test. We should do that. I'm opposed to amnesty. Uh, I'm for the proper documentation to get a job. 
Uh, and once you've given the proper documentation uh, to people and then employers don't ask for it, I'm for penalties for them. Uh, but we're way behind on the documents that people need. We're behind on securing the border. Uh, I think we're making steps in the right direction. I'm frustrated by that, as you are. Uh, but uh, it's a lot better than it was. There are a lot fewer people coming across the border now than there were a year ago, two years ago, or three years ago. Uh, and so we're heading in the right direction. Can I just make a comment to that? You can. Provide the proper documentation on the northeast corner of Cardinal Square. That is how close it is. No, I mean the proper documentation for a worker. You're going to have some people in the country legally to work. And they should be able to at least have the documents to go to work. Uh, there are really two fences necessary here. One is the, the, the actual fence at the border. The other is the fence at the hiring desk, two minutes, to where people have the documents it takes to know whether they qualify to get a job in this country or not. And it's fine with me if that includes me as well as the person who just came in. Thank you, Congressman. Thank you all. Thanks for what we work for.